Hi, greetings from the uh, International Space Station from the Cupola, and uh, this is my first ever video blog from space. It's uh, part four of the uh, saga of Space Shuttle Endeavor's visit here. Um, three ships pass in the night. It's uh, the part four of that uh, of that series, if you will. And uh, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to try this uh, new mode of communication out. I think you're going to be really fortunate because the sun is going to set here in a in a little bit. So hopefully we'll get a, a nice view of that, and the picture will uh, will turn out good. So um, I got a couple of topics I want to talk about with this last blog post. The first one was uh, titled "Our Italian Restaurant," and what that refers to is when we had those guys here, uh, the six crewmates of uh, STS-134 on Special Endeavor. We got together uh, a few times to have dinner. Uh, the first time we did, it was 12 of us. It was the six uh, space station crew members because Katie and Paulo and Dima hadn't left yet. And uh, so we got together, all, all six uh, ISS crew members and all six shuttle crew members, and we were in Node 1 in uh, um, the space station. And it was an Italian dinner. So Roberto Vittori brought up some Italian food, um, some specialties from uh, Sardinia, actually. And it was uh, really nice. Everybody chipped in some uh, some of their own food, and we had a really nice uh, evening, um, you know, kind of relaxing after some really busy work days. Um, we had another dinner after Katie and uh, Paolo and, and Dima left. We had uh, one in the Russian segment. Uh, and that one uh, segues into one of my other topics I wanted to talk about was uh, Everybody Loves Ice Cream. Uh, we had a, a freezer that the Space Shuttle Endeavour brought up uh, to be installed on the, uh, on the space station and it was, uh, you know, had to be brought up powered, uh, so cold. And so they thought, well, why would we launch a freezer with nothing in it? Let's put some, something in for the crew. So we had some, some nice ice cream and, you know, after not tasting ice cream for two months, um, it was really nice and, uh, you know, a really good experience to, to have something a little different. And then the last meal we had uh, was in the Spatial Endeavor itself, and that was uh, really nice. We, it's always good to get together uh, on these busy missions and, and spend some time together. Uh, one of the other topics I wanted to talk about was that Yuri Gagarin has made it to the International Space Station. And uh, what that means is on our Soyuz spacecraft that we launched in really close to the 50th anniversary of that guy's launch, uh, uh, being the first uh, human in orbit, uh, to honor that, to honor the 50-year anniversary, uh, the space, our spacecraft was named Gagarin, and his picture is on the, uh, on the spacecraft itself. I'd like to show it to you out the window, but unfortunately we're on the bottom of the space station and the, uh, we dock to the top of the space station, but um, when Spanky, uh, Mike Fink, and, and Taz, Greg Shamatov were outside, they took some pictures of it, and so that will be, those pictures will be included in, uh, in this post. So it was really an honor to, to have uh, you know, Yuri Gagarin's likeness and, and his name uh, come aboard the space station. So that, uh, you know, that's really neat to have, and I, I can't wait to share those pictures. And uh, when Mike Fossum and I go out on our uh, spacewalk uh, during the STS-135 mission, we're going to be sure to try and take take some of those same pictures. Um, the next one, uh, the next topic I want to talk about is called a cloud of luminescent vapor. And so uh, during the mission, uh, during the dock mission, I had a private medical conference, and I decided to, to do it up here and in a video format just like we're, we're doing now. But when I opened up the shutters of the uh, cupola, and here's a... Here's a picture of some of the shutters right there, and the sun is getting ready to set. Uh, when I opened the shutters, I was greeted with an, an amazing view, a uh, view that I've never seen before. We were over Australia, and uh, the auroras were just spectacular. But before, I, I'm going to turn the camera around here so that um, as I talk, you guys can hopefully see the uh, sunset. So there's an orbital sunset uh, going on right there. So, but looking out the window on that uh, on that medical conference, you know, I've seen auroras before, but never like this. Um, they weren't off in the distance. It was almost like we were flying through this green and orange, you know, waves of, of dancing luminescent clouds. It was it was absolutely spectacular, and you know, a really really great experience uh, to have that. Um, high altitude home repairs. So. Uh, we did a lot of work outside, or, or the, the 135 crew did, I should say, but uh, we also did a lot of work inside, and we replaced the uh, oxygen generation system. I'll try and give you a better view of the sunset there. 
the oxygen generation system and also the carbon dioxide removal assembly, uh, both those units were, were replaced. Uh, uh, Mike Fink and, and Greg Shamatoff and myself did that, and you know that was part of the work that really is helping us to uh, keep the uh, space station in full utilization through the end of the decade. And I'm going to stop here for a second and uh, get to a place where I could have some light. So stand by. So I'm back with you. I'm in the U.S. laboratory right now. And uh, the last topic I wanted to discuss is something that I was calling Storm in the Milky Way. And Storm is a test that the Space Shuttle Endeavor uh, did to test some of the new rendezvous equipment that will be on future spacecraft. And what that meant was after they undocked, they uh, did the normal fly around the space station uh, to document uh, the state of the, state of the uh, space station. But then they hung around for a while and tested some of their equipment. And uh, while they did that, I was fortunate to see them. Uh, I went to the MRM2 module, and there was a window on the side where I could see them out on the side. And it was really kind of spectacular to see. You know, At first, they just looked like this big, bright spotlight at night. But it was against the backdrop of the, the rotating Milky Way. You know, as we're circling the Earth, the, uh, the Milky Way was slowly rotating. and there was just one fixated bright light that I knew was uh, was those guys. And so that was pretty cool. And every time they fired their engines, there was this spherical hypervelocity shock wave that of, of like this luminescent vapor, this luminescent gas that was, you know, spreading it out in all directions, including, you know, engulfing the space station. And it was really, a, you know, kind of spectacular to see that. Um, they At one point, they came underneath the space station and uh, we saw them from the uh, service module with the uh, earth-facing windows down there and they started flashing uh, a flashlight at us kind of a, as a morse code and we did the same to them and we were kind of communicating uh, with flashlights uh, between the space station and the, uh, and the space shuttle. So, you know, we had uh, as many as 12 people up here for, for a while and now it's just uh, Andre, Sasha and I. Uh, it's been quite a, kind of quiet. We're uh, really looking forward to uh, Mike Fossum and Sergey Volkov and uh, Satoshi Furukawa. Uh, they, are, they launch tomorrow, uh, and uh, on Thursday they should be here. Uh, right now it's Monday. Um, so uh, I hope that you like this first uh, video blog. I hope to do more. And uh, I'm being called to, off to work, so we'll see, <laughs> we'll see you next time.